there. What do your Eatsy stats mean? This is part two in my deep diving into Eatsy stats, helping you out here with what all these things mean. In part one, we looked at what the stats on your Eatsy stats page for how customers found you, what they mean today. I want to show you my favorite tool that we've been given on Eatsy that most people don't even know how to use, the search analytics beta. And I'm not going to show you 100% how to use the whole thing just now. We just want to look at what the stats mean. So I'll explain the traffic sources, what they mean, dive into that a little bit. And later on, we're going to be I'm going to be making some videos of what you need to do to dive into these stats to, to actually improve your shop based on the stats. But for now, let's look at what these stats actually are. So you get to this, my, my favorite tool on the Etsy. From your Etsy shop dashboard, rather than stats, we go into marketing, which is already interesting. They're saying we're showing you data as a marketing tool, that, that says a lot more about that at another time. So now with this in general, so it was marketing, um, but I wasn't even paying attention to what I did. Marketing search analytics beta, click on that. And now with these stats, with any stats, you, you're you looking at the big picture. Firstly, you want to use a large enough time frame. I would generally look at a year for this. I want a lot of data. Depends how many views you're getting, how busy your shop is. And remember, this isn't all your views. This is looking at visits to your shop via Etsy search. Um, but it's not also including people who are searching on Android phones. So it's not every single visit coming from Etsy search. It's not every single visit you had. So you've got to look at a large enough time frame. Me personally, <coughs> excuse, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm seeing for the past month, um, past 30 days, I've nearly got 500 visits coming to my shop from search on the desktop and the iOS. For me, this wouldn't quite be enough data for me to be able to read too much into it, but it's good enough. I'd probably maybe look at a quarter if you've got this number of views. Um, just expand the time frame so you've got enough visits to your shop from this to get enough data. But so let's let's look at what we've got in here already, what the data is. So hopefully this this top section <coughs> excuse me makes a little sense but so and if you hover over it this is fantastic it gives you more details here but visits to your shop via Etsy search um, so visits to your Etsy shop and listings that came from people searching on Etsy. Um, bear in mind, Etsy views and visits are slightly different. Don't try and make anything add up, everything add up, but this is good enough for the big picture. And then the percentage of those visits that resulted in a sale. So 499 visits to my shop, 2.6% percent of that resulted in a sale. So that is effectively a 2.6 percent conversion rate for people finding me through search. This is a much better useful number than your overall conversion in your shop. Um, and then the average order value. So for all the sales that I made um, on those visits to my shop, it averages out at £22.49. This should be in your own currency. And then the total earnings for that time period you made through Etsy search. Again, don't try and make this add up because this isn't going to be how much, isn't necessarily going to be how much you earned in that time period because you might have had people come to your shop that didn't come through search. If they came through social media or all sorts of other platforms and made a sale. So this is just telling you through it, and they could have also been searching on Android. But this is the amount we've made for the data that we're looking at. And then we're seeing these numbers are how's it changed compared to the same period last year. So little green arrows are nice. Um, 
27% increased in visits. My conversion has gone up 400%. That is fantastic. I will talk about that in another video if you're interested. Um, average order value has gone down ever so slightly from last year. There is a good reason for that. Um, and the total earnings through all of that year on year has gone up 522%. So to me, I'm going to say my search is doing pretty good compared to last year. Now, this is what I really like, all the data that we get here. Again, you've got these little question marks here. If you're not sure what something means, you can look at it. But this is what I'm going to cover today. So the first column is your search, their search query. This is not the tags and titles that you've used. This is the keywords that customers were typing into the search bar. So this is fantastic. I find this great. This is exactly what you want to see. And this is why it kind of is marketing, because it gives you an idea if there were terms here that you hadn't thought of. Like, I don't think I've actually, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think I've looked at optimizing for the word corgi gift. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. So it's given me an idea. What is it that customers are searching for that they might have seen my items for? So the query, the search term that customers are actually searching for that they were shown your listings in search for. And then impressions. This is a great one. Total appearances in search. When a customer searched for the word corgi, they 2,873 times they saw my listings in search. This tells me something really great. This gives me an idea about the volume of real people for the past month that have searched for these kind of keywords. You can sort the columns by clicking on them if you want to see highest to lowest or lowest to highest or whatever. But these high numbers mean there's a high number of people searching for this search term, but it's a search term that Etsy does show me in search for sometimes. So that's good to know that if there's a high number here, it's a very good show that people there's people interested and this might be a keyword that might be useful for us if, and if we look at the next column, the position, this is the average position you're shown in search. So if you're the top of page number one, you're at position one, as if they were all lined up. So that would put me on, I don't know, page five or six or something. On average, bear in mind, due to personalizations and the fact that nothing stays the same forever with items selling out or selling and relisting, new competitors coming in and putting up listings. For the whole of the month, I've not sat at position 137. But on average, sometimes people have seen me higher, sometimes lower but that's my average position. And if you see a high number of impressions with a, a, a big number here, this is saying, maybe I could optimize for this a bit more. This is a good, good idea. Um, so we can see some like like bookmark. I am showing up very, very far away in search. People don't have a good chance to see me. Now, there's, there's more to it. This is super handy. So visits. This is the amount when people were shown me in search and they saw me roughly at position 137. How many of the people that how many of these 2,873 people saw me? and actually clicked on my listing. So there we have that number. Now you can, I wasn't going to do this till later, but I do it now. Visits per impression is, when you click filter columns, we can add different columns into here. Now visits per impression is just the percentage of people who visited compared to the people that were shown. So what I like to do here is look at, for the ones that have a fair number of impressions, which is why I'm saying look at a big data set. If one person was shown your item and they clicked on it, that's not statistically important. But if we're seeing high numbers, like okay, it's less accurate because it's only 151 people were searching, but 
3% of people who were shown my item clicked on it. That is, that 3% is higher than everything else there. And also cat lover gift. That is a high number of visits per impression. So this is a good number to look at. The number of times it's shown in search, how often are people clicking on it? This is a really, really good metric. And I always pull this up to see, especially if you're not like you're not going to be getting sales for every single keyword because you're maybe not just being seen enough to be getting sales. Like if we've got a conversion rate of nearly six percent, that's fantastic. But if you're only getting like seven or eight visits, you don't have enough visits to tell if the conversion rate's any good. If I wanted to know if my listing for bookmark was any good, I would need to get more views on it to find to find that out. So your conversion for the keyword is a really important number, but you won't necessarily have got enough sales to be able to, to, be able to tell from that. So visits per impression is like a really good first step so you're wanting when you get enough data you want to look at which items have the best visits per impression which items have the best conversion and see if anything stands out which are not items which search queries so yeah so we're looking at sort of the number of sales you've had how much money you have made for Etsy for the number of times they showed you for a certain keyword and when people freak out about conversion if their conversion is dropping or high in their shop or even for specific listings or anything that number is not important the number that is important when there's enough data for it to be statistically accurate this is the conversion number that is important how well does your listing do in search when shown for that specific search term now unfortunately we don't know the conversion rate of all the competition that's going to be there but i know nearly six percent conversion rate when people search for the word corgi which is quite a broad keyword it's not very specific so that's actually a really good conversion rate so that's why although this there will be a lot of listings with the word corgi in i'm doing not bad and i could possibly expect my position there to rise as i've been making some good sales so that's a good keyword for me the rest haven't had sales from search in this little time period let's let's i did say we could click on these things so let's click to order it by conversion rate. I don't know why it's brought up some with none, but we can see the ones that got really good conversion rate. Um, obviously, this has only had one visit, so we don't worry about that. It's going to be 100% conversion rate. But when you look further down, when people search for the word corgi butt bookmark, not many people are searching for it. Um visits per impression when they see my item there they are very likely to click on it and when they click on it they're very likely to buy it so that's a good term for me corgi necklace now this is weird because i don't sell any corgi necklaces they're bookmarks <laughs> but visits per impression are good and conversion rate so that's why people are showing me that's why etsy show me for those things so i love looking at visits per impression and conversion rate. These are important metrics. Um, I'm just going to remove, you can add or remove anything here just so that we can see the full bit of the screen. So you've got conversion rate. Revenue is obviously how much money you made for that search term. Again, that is important. I don't think they give us the metric. No, but something you can work out for yourself doing a little bit of maths is how much money per impression. There's an important one because the impressions are Etsy showing you to customers. They're showing you in the search. So Etsy want to make money from showing you in the search. So the more money they make per impression on your listing, that's a good a good signal that it's a good listing for you and for Etsy. The final column here, listings. This is a really cool one. Um, let's look at one that's got a bit of a higher number. So Corgi. If I click on this, view the six listings that appeared for this query. So it shows you 
when someone searches for Corgi, what listings of mine have Etsy decided that they're going to be able to show? And it shows your listing. There's the little photograph of your listing. Here's the title. And what is really nice is it's telling you what it's pulling out. Why did it decide to show this listing for Corgi? You've got the word Corgi in the title. We like that. That's why we're showing you. And even for this listing, for that keyword, it's going, I think this is fairly new. It's showing us the impressions, the position that this listing was on, the number of visits and what the conversion rate was for that listing for that term. So it's fantastic. You could even see if some don't have a good conversion rate, you could maybe, if I didn't like this, I do like this, but if I didn't want Etsy to see it, for Corgi, and it's seeing it because Corgi's in the title, I could maybe take it out. Um, but, but anyway, that's that's really cool. So you can see all of the listings. Now, it's saying it's not seeing in my tags for Corgi. I think it does say it somewhere, but it's for whatever reason. I've, I could check and see, can I add Corgi to my tags so it can spot me there? Um, and then this one, so we see it's seeing the word Corgi in my title, which it is. And in my tag, it's matching me for Corgi because I have a tag of Pembroke Welsh Corgi. I think it's supposed to be Pen Pembrokeshire. I'm not doing very good there. Um, but anyway, so that's how it's matched up to be able to show that listing. Um, this, I really need to check my tag. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it's useful. So again, this listing, it's shown for Corgi, but it's shown, it sees in the title Corgi, but it's not seen it in the tags. So this is really interesting. Now, again, here's an interesting one. It's decided to show this listing. It's only shown it three times and very low down in search, and it's got no matching values. I don't have Corgi in it anywhere, but this is potentially... Because when people were searching for Corgi, Etsy searching around and going, right, well, what what is wh what is good for Corgi? Well, Pam's shop has been doing good for Corgi. Here, try this listing. So it's trying to learn. It only showed it three times and nobody clicked or liked it. So I've got nothing telling it that that's a Corgi, so I don't have to do anything. It'll probably stop showing it. But that's the cool thing about search algorithms. They're trying to learn. So sometimes they'll throw things up that weren't that relevant and it goes, oh yeah, it's not that relevant. But that's, that's a really cool way you're seeing why Etsy thinks that listing was good for that search term. So you can look like that listing's making me a lot, a lot more money than other listings. So it's really handy to click on this and see what listings and why is Etsy showing it. Um, this is good for the term Corgi, but but bookmark the tags why it's why it's seeing this as relevant. It's seen I've got a tag for bookmark dog bookmark. Um, there's a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Uh, there's nothing. See, I could, if people were searching a lot for Corgi, but bookmark, I could add but to some of the, some of the tags as well. So it gives you, there's a whole load of help there, but I love this tool. Um, hopefully that helps a little bit to show you what's there and what it all means. And I hope it inspires you to actually dig in. I love the search analytics beta and I am going to show you more about that later. Okay, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.